Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. I do videos of motherhood, womanhood, lifestyle videos, family vlogs, and DIY, okay? So I have two lovely daughters, Cora and Ava. I feature them sometimes on my channel, but this channel is my space, okay? It is for me. So you guys get used to this space. <laughs> So if you're new to this channel, you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back You're the real MVP like you are the, you are the best of the best, okay? So and also before I jump into this video if you know that you are always watching my videos But you're not subscribed like why why are you doing this to me? <laughs> why are you doing this to me? Please click the subscribe button there the red subscribe 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 button okay you guys it is free it helps us a lot if you subscribe also turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime i post a new videos you guys i have interesting videos though. like ask ask other people on this channel like we have fun on this channel occasionally we share party rides you know we welcome our new guests <laughs> so you guys please just stick around like i was looking at my analytics recently and i realized that 70 a whooping 70 percent of people who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel hey who did this to me my village people my village people want to follow me to to youtube please don't allow my village people to win please click the subscribe button and yeah join the family okay so this video is going to be a story time video i'm going to be telling you guys one very hot gist the gist is the gist is flaming hot okay so for you to enjoy this juice, you have you need snacks. Yeah, you can't just be watching me like that because me, I have my own snacks here. Actually, I just have water, but anyway, nobody's asking. You guys go and get your snacks, anything you need to be comfortable. Sit back, relax, and watch this video, okay? You are definitely going to learn a thing or two from my story. And even if you don't learn anything, it's just an interesting story anyway. So, yeah, if you would like to hear my gist, let's just jump right into this. So you guys, as much as I love telling stories, as much as these stories are, you know, kind of interesting and all that, I pray, I'm praying that this is the last house help horror stories that I'm going to tell, okay? I pray this is the last, this is part two, I've, I've done part one before, so if you've not watched part one, just click the, is it here or here? It's going to be here, yeah. So if you've not, oh, is it here? Oh, they have me. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that, if you have not watched part one, you can go and watch part one and come back here or just watch this one and still go and watch part one. You're not going to miss anything by watching this one first or that one first, you know, anyway. So yeah, if you've not watched part one, go and watch it. But yeah, as much as the stories are sweet, it's sweet gist. These are real life stories. These are real life people that are involved. These are real life scary situations that... To be honest, I don't want to witness again. I don't want my parents to witness again. I just want us to live a good life. Right now, I have the help and I really love her and I really appreciate her. And I just pray that things work out for us for the best. But yeah, I don't want to tell any horror stories like this anymore. Let's go on to other gist, okay? I have a lot of interesting stories to tell you guys. So let's move on to other gist. So, but let me just tell this story and close this chapter, okay? So yeah, <laughs> so yeah, um, this story I'm going to be telling them in two parts. The first part is going to be a story that didn't happen to me, happened to my parents. In the part one of this video, um, the first part was what happened to my parents, although I was a child then, so I was kind of involved. And the second part was what happened to me, okay? So this one, is, the first part is what happened to my parents, I wasn't there, but the second part is what happened to me, okay? So, the one that happened to my parents, okay? Now, this one is not really a house help. It's not really a house help story. It's, I just put it here because it, it entails bringing strangers into your home to come and, you know, just bring strangers into your home, basically. So, my parents, during one of their trips to the village, um, they saw these cute children. They didn't have a mom. They said their mom was late. They were living with their grandma, and these children were not taken care of. They were not eating properly. You just see that they were malnourished. And my parents really felt bad for these kids and she was like, my mom especially said, you know what, she's going to take these kids back to Lagos and train them, okay? And their mother, their grandmom was so happy. Now, there were three children, but the first one was sent to go and live as a help in someone else's house. And this child was just 11. 
11 an 11 year old was sent to go and live as a help in someone else's house okay but the other two kids were six and seven or seven and eight they're around that age range so my parents kind of informally adopted those children okay there was no sign paperwork or anything but it was just unwritten agreement that my parents were adopting those kids kind of so my mom took the kids back to Lagos. See, you guys, my mom is the ultimate mother. Even <laughs> my mom's is on another level, anyway. So, my mom took these kids back to Lagos. Imagine at her age, she used to wake up in the morning, prepare them for school, make their breakfast, pack their lunch, you know, send them to school. They will come back, do assignments. Like, she had little children living with her. Like, in fact, she told me at some point, people used to say, why is she wasting all her energy on someone else's children when she has her grandkids that are coming? You know, like, she should just conserve her energy for her grandkids or something. I don't know. Anyway, it was just like, why are you going through this stress at this age? Then, sometime later, the older daughter, the one that was sent to live as a help, I think she was returned back to the grandma, and then my mom just took her. So, the three kids, Three orphans basically were living with my mom and she was taking care of them like her own kids. First of all, one thing my mom complained about to me was that the second child, which was a boy, he was very playful. He never used to add weight. You know, my mom used to buy all sorts for them to eat. He would eat though, you don't know, think he wasn't eating. He was eating well, but he wouldn't add weight, he was always looking hungry. <laughs> then my mom used to complain a lot. She would go and buy multivitamins for him, you know, she would always chatting at him, sit down, it's because you're not you're not staying warm, you're not, you're not, you cannot add weight. Because you're not relaxed, you cannot add weight, you know. She was always complaining about that. I, mean, I was just telling her, well, it's nature, just leave there, my bed. As long as this person is eating well, as long as the person is well taken care of, it's nature. So don't bother yourself about it. But my mom was always worried about the way the boy was looking. The other sisters weren't eating as much as the boy, but they were looking very good. I know that's why sometimes I feel anyway, let me not digress too much, but I feel bad. When I see children who are not well taken care of, see, it doesn't take much to take care of a child. My mom then used to say that her heart used to break anytime she dishes food for them because she would use this mindset of, oh, they are hungry, let her give them food. So she would heap food for them. They would say, no, they want small. So what each child was eating was not even up to what you would feed a grown one person, okay? What each child would eat at a meal, either breakfast or lunch or dinner was not the two of them combined their meals were not up to what one person would eat so why are children suffering why can't we help others some of us the food we throw away in our houses can feed 10 children anyway i digress so let us come back to the story okay let's tell them just just give him what you're giving him what is motivating whatever if it's not changing just know that it is nature okay my parents are going through financial challenges things we are spoiling in the house you know another way money can really leave your house you leave your pocket is by things you have actually spoiling that's a very good way to go broke you know when keep when things keep spoiling at an accelerated rate things were spoiling in the house like it was just that period was just challenging for them but you know they already had three kids to take care of they were paying school fees for these kids feeding these kids so i mean they just needed to be financially stable so at the same time there was this grown boy i think he was 17 or so he had finished secondary school he wanted to enter university his, he was also an orphan, nobody was taking care of him he was as good as disowned in the village everybody just treated him like trash so my parents too now, helpers of the helpless they went and took this boy but they brought him more as a help yeah, to help with, you know, things around the house and to also help with taking care of the three kids so this guy was in our house too so yeah, this older, older boy and the little boy were um, staying in one room while the two girls were staying in another room yeah, so one night the older boy came to my parents room and told my parents that the younger boy doesn't like sleeping on the bed that he doesn't want to be to be as if there's something wrong if they come and see, if my mom walks in and sees the boy always sleeping on the floor that was why he was like he has to come and report that he has been insisting that the boy should lie down on the bed but the boy has refused so my parents now called the boy now what's going on why don't you want to sleep on the bed then the boy now said that the little boy now said I think he didn't want to answer or he was just uncomfortable or something. They now threatened him that he has to answer what exactly is the problem. Why, do, why doesn't he want to sleep on the bed? He now said the only reason why he sleeps on the floor is so that he can communicate well with one man and there's a man that comes to take him in the night and they'll go for their meeting. <laughs> My parents were like, 
Et c'est again. <laughs> like again, again. So, <laughs> seriously, the point I said, like the man comes, he's at uh, this one, just, you know, stories. My mom said she was so upset. The next day, she took the boy for deliverance. She didn't send him home. She didn't to send him home. Took him for deliverance, brought him back. So, every night, around that time that the boy says the man comes to carry him for the meeting. A spiritual man that he cannot see. Around that time, every night, my mom would wake up and call the boy. And then they would start praying. Every single night. That's what my mom was doing. Once it's time that she, that she I think around maybe 2 a.m. or something, I said the man usually comes. Once it's that time, she would wake him up. They will stay and pray till maybe an hour time or something. They will all, all go back to sleep. So that's what my mom was doing every night, just so that she wanted the boy to be delivered or something. And then she just give me updates that they've gone for deliverance. The boy is now better. Took the boy to church. Was always preaching to him because, to, to be honest, the real deliverance is let the person accept Christ. That is true deliverance. Also, when people lay hands on people, when you lay hands on them and the demons go. Trust me, as they are going out, the demons are coming back because you have not, you have not changed the vessel, okay? You've not changed the vessel, you are just emptying the vessel and then, of course, they will come back. And anyway, before I continue the story, if you are one of those people who I don't believe in all this spiritual, if you're not, if you don't believe in spiritual things, good for you, okay? I pray you do, I wish you do, but that's your business, but for me, I believe in them so much, I have seen so much, I have experienced so much, I have witnessed so much to not believe in it, like that ship has sailed. I so that was it for that guy's, that little boy's story. Oh. My parents still continued with him, but they just knew that things were not just the same again. The house, something was off, but they just couldn't pinpoint what was off. So, one day my dad was in his office, my dad works from home, uh, like he turned our garage into his office, so he worked from, from home pretty much. So one day he was in his office, and then the girl, the first child, that's one that was sent to be a house help somewhere else came to meet him to you know how children like reporting now came to meet him to report that her younger brother kicked her in the mouth kicked her in kicked her kicked her tongue kicked her as in kicked her in the mouth as in he kicked her tongue the story was just off to my father like how how does how does someone kick your tongue where was your tongue when the person was kicking it anyway but in my father's first reaction was oh go and call him Call the boy, come, why did you kick your sister? Blah 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 blah. What happened that you kicked your sister in the tongue? And the boy now said, eh, that is not the girl when she will bring out her tongue and be behaving like a snake. That she will lie down on the floor, she will bring out her tongue and be behaving like a snake. And he's always telling her to stop it. So that day he now kicked her in her tongue. Like what are you talking about right now? Like what kind of story is this? So my father now asked the girl, What why are you pretending that okay, show me what you are doing? Show me how you are pretending to be a snake. The girl had laid down on the floor and started wiggling her body and was bringing out her tongue. You know the way snakes bring her, brings out their tongue. I'm like, why, why are you doing that? Why are you bringing your tongue at, from your mouth as a, like a snake? She said, nothing. She's just playing. She's just playing. My father said, okay, oh, no wahala, but he just knew that something was off. I think when my mom now came back, they now called all of them and said, asking them questions. You know, I got something was just off. I mean, from the story we've had before, my parents just knew that okay, this is not ordinary anymore. We need to find out what is going on in this house. My parents are interrogating the children, you know, and their children now kept asking them questions and asking questions upon questions until my parents got to the bottom of it. And what is the bottom of it? The boy belongs to a certain group or this cult, I don't know, spiritual cult group, whatever it is, while the girl and the little girl, why the two girls belong to another one, okay? So, the two girls suck the blood of the boy. That's the story. I don't know, I don't know if they made it up or if they're not explaining the story very well. Whatever the case is, it's just not stories children should be saying. That two of them suck their brother's blood. And my mom was now, when my mom heard that, she believed the story simply because there was a time she complained to me that this boy had an injury on his leg. When she was telling me about how he doesn't eat well, he had a deep cut on his leg when he was playing football in school. They took him to the nurse and the nurse sold him up. But the nurse noted that the amount of blood that came out of his leg was not enough for the cuts. So imagine someone having a deep cut in the hand and just a few drops of blood will come out. Like, what happened to the rest of the blood? So, all these things I'm saying, I'm just telling you guys how the story went. So, deduce from it what you want to 
you know, you, whatever I want to take, take away from the story, take away from it, but I'm just telling you exactly what happened, okay? So, if you can come up with any logical explanation for what is going on, leave it in the comment section. If you believe that all these things are spiritual and they have to do with demons and, you know, witchcraft and stuff like that, leave it in the comment section, okay? For me, I believe that it's I believe that it's a mixture of both, okay? I believe that there's a logical explanation to some of the things that happen. I believe that there's a logical explanation to some of the things that happen. And I also believe that, yeah, no, it is not, uh, it, it, it's not, it's more than the eyes can see, okay? So, that they suck their brother's blood, that there is one man that comes in the night. Okay, my mom said, okay, that man that comes in the night, how come he doesn't come to our room? Then I said that the man said he cannot go to their room, that he, what he does is he gives three of them now white powder that he gives the three of them white powder and he will tell them that they should blow the powder and keep saying that there will be no money in this family there will be no money in this family there will be no money in this family so they keep saying that they will saying it you will never have money you will always lose money there will be no money in this family that that's the story okay that is the story i'm telling you just the way it happened now when i heard the story the first thing that broke my heart is this is your only chance to make it in life. Like you have, been, you have not. Well, it's not your only chance. God can still help them through some other means. But you were abandoned in the village. You were not well taken care of. You were not even eating properly. The three of you were not really eating properly. Why is it that the devil now doesn't want you people to make progress? Like the devil is really fighting their progress so badly that even the better place they were in the devil came there to try and spoil it for them so you know because i was just like if there's nobody in this house how will they take care of you they will send you back now so the devil was the devil whoever is, is doing them just does not want those children to make progress in this life okay anyway so after that one happened now my parents were like ah no one that things we are so bad initially my parents kept the kids they were in our house for a while but what's how how much can they take it's not at that stage where she's supposed to be resting and taking care of her grandchildren that she will not start dealing with this kind of mess. So, people just advise that, you know what, just take those kids back home. There's really no point trying to. Just choose your battles, okay? Choose your battles. You're not young enough to fight these battles. Let me just put it that way. So, that was it. That was why my parents, that was how my parents, you know, sent those children back to their grandma. But what my parents are still doing now is paying for their school fees and also feeding them so my parents are still taking care of the kids but not just from our house they are now back to their grandma while they you know take care of them from afar okay so that's it for story one i hope this story i hope this video is not too long but you guys like this now so let me just continue so now the second story was the one that happened to me that was the time i had this help who she was pretty she was okay she was okay she wasn't really She's not really a bad person, like in her behavior and all that. She was just okay. It's just that <laughs> she's a bit, she was a bit dull. You know, when somebody is dull, both in movement, she was kind of, I won't call her lazy, but she was just dull. So she's the kind of person that will wash plates for three hours. Why? So at night, I'll put my kids to bed. You know, sometimes I'll even sleep. Maybe I'll just wake up to go and drink water in the middle of the night. I'll see her around 12 a.m. eating her, her, her dinner. Madam, why are you eating now? I was washing plates. Washing plates since 7 p.m. I mean, since when? Because normally in our house, by 7, we already had dinner, we're already, everybody's already. Later it's 8 o'clock. Sometimes she helps me get the kids ready for bed, you know, and other things. But how come you are still awake by 12 midnight eating your dinner? Okay? Because I'll come around 11, I'll see her washing plates. I'm like, what is going on? What are you washing? What are you? Are you watching restaurants, place for restaurant or something? Yeah, so she was dull like that, but I was just, you know, coping with her because to be honest, I really don't like changing her. I don't like this one comes to your house, the person cannot stay, the person will go, another person will come. Like, <laughs> if anybody knows me, I tolerate, I tolerate like till it's almost choking me because <laughs> just because I hate change in that aspect, I tolerate till it's like, eh, eh, madam, we don't do, like, let this person go, okay? So, yeah, I was just okay with her. She used to call me mommy. We were okay, you know. I, I liked her, kind of. I liked her because she was okay with my kids, you know. She would take her time to feed Eva. Even when Eva doesn't want anybody to feed her, she would take her time to feed Eva. So, she was okay. She was pretty good. Just little, little aspects were off, okay. And one of the off aspects was a few days after she came to my house, one day I walked in on her 
doing something with herself. Okay. <laughs> yes. I walked in on her to do something with herself. She was on the phone and she was just I was just like, oh my god, what is all this? Okay. But that did not make me send her away because my man was just like, well, yeah, it's part of life. So so as long as you are not my children are not sleeping in your room or you're not staying with them like without me being there, I'm fine. So that was the first thing that was like red flag to me. Because I'm like, you're coming to somebody's house for the first time. Can't you can't you arrange yourself? Why, why did you even lock the door? You know, when you wanted to do no, I don't know, it was just very weird to me anyway. So the second off thing was one time she came to meet me that she has boil down there or something like boil. I just don't know what's happening to her down there. I said, go and uh, go to pharmacy now, go to hospital. She said eh, that she will go, but I should come and see first. I should come and see. I said, I don't want to see, madam. I want a doctor. Even if I see, what am I going to do about it? If you feel that there's something happening to you down there, I think you need to go to the pharmacy tomorrow, okay? So that's another second red flag. I was like, what was what, that supposed to mean? It was just really off to me. Uh, and she was always on her phone, which is pretty much most of them. They are always on their phone. So I just told her, see, when you are walking, let your phone be in the room, okay? At night, you can make call all night if you want. But when you are walking, let your phone be aside, okay? So that was pretty much it with her. She didn't really have any. I, I, did, I wasn't really worried about her, even though, like I said, I don't live my kids with them anywhere we go all of us are going my kids sometimes i don't leave them at home and carry my kids and go out but leaving them with my kids at home and me going out to say no no even though i have cameras in the house he said no no so i did, i wasn't really worried because i could go but I, I was at home too you know it's not like i have a nine to five to go to i'm at home so any any little thing i'm there until one day my husband called me into the room and he said <laughs> because our room is where we have the monitor for the cameras in the house so sometimes we just relax and just go through all the footage for the day or for the days before we'll go through all the footage and just you know be sure all the cameras are on and that we didn't capture anything off you know so my husband said that day he was just going through the footage and it was now he not started watching live she was in the kitchen so he started watching her live and then he called me and said come and see your girl i was like what he said just watch as I was watching now, what did I see? She was in the kitchen. She wasn't washing the plate that she was supposed to be washing. It's not that she wasn't washing, but she would wash one, rinse it, and then start talking. First of all, okay. So in our house, we have a gate man, and the gate man's wife, um, she was the one helping us to clean the house. While even till now, we still have someone who cleans the house. You know, the help basically just does kitchen stuff and you know, little stuff around the house and you know, staying with the kids and all that. So that was the girl's job then, just you know, take care of the kitchen, wash plates, you know, clean kitchen, uh, clean some of the rooms and stuff like that. But she wasn't doing most of the cleaning was done by the gate man's wife. The lady who was cleaning for us, that's the gate man's wife and this lady, they were both friends, very good friends. In fact, one day I walked in on them gossiping about me, okay gossiping about me and the funny thing is i did not send her away because of that because my mind was like eh is it because i walked in on them who doesn't gossip about whoever they stay with it is part of life that's why i didn't send her away and it wasn't like what they were gossiping was bad per se but i scolded my girl there for something she did so she was trying to tell the other person that she didn't do it that me i was just uh, exaggerating things or something so it wasn't really like a very bad kind of gossip but even at that it was enough to send her away if it was another person's house but me I just said you know what it's part of life i can't come here and i'm doing holier than thou we all gossip about people okay is it because i cut them gossip about me you know guys tito that's another thing if you have helps in your house if you have strangers in your house you better ditch your sleeper sometimes and tiptoe you that you, you catch i've caught so many things by tiptoeing around my house okay so if you tiptoe you're going to catch if you have cameras you're going to catch if you were coming down the stairs don't don't be coming down the stairs and be making noise maybe your wedding ring will be making noise or your mm -mm, you have to tiptoe sometimes so that you catch <laughs> so i entered the room and saw her she was just she was washing plates and she was just like talking so i was thinking she was talking with the guest man's wife okay but the guest man's wife was i was like where would the guest man's wife be standing that she was talking because she was at she was in the kitchen facing the sink so sometimes she would turn to face the gas cooker and be talking to the gas cooker so then like the person is not who was talking to is not sitting on the gas cooker okay so who is she talking to i checked the camera the guest man and his wife were in front of the house nobody else was in the house she was talking and by talking i don't mean just 
uh you know how sometimes i don't know if you guys do but sometimes i talk to myself so sometimes i i think out loud but this one was more than thinking out loud this was full-on conversation with the theatrics with the gesticulation with the expression she was talking you know she was just talking she would do like this she would do like that sometimes she would laugh sometimes she would frown as if she's scolding someone i was like what the hell is going on <laughs> what the hell <laughs> i reported to this my mom was not even bothered he was just like just look at your girl, it wasn't bothered. Me, I was like, no, she can't sleep in my house. Please be at my children, where my children, where my children, where my children, where my children, sit down here. Like, she can't sleep in my house, you know, but I was like, I beg, is it because you saw her on camera? Hmm? Is it because you have camera in your house and you saw her? I beg him, he's not even bothered. That's, that he, what he doesn't just like that she's done and she doesn't do the work well sometimes. That's what bothers him. But if it's whether she's possessed or not, or she's talking to spirit or not, that's not his business, okay? I mean, yeah. That's for you, Oga. For me, you, you better be sound spiritually and physically if you're going to live in my house, okay? I don't want to play that play because I have children in this house. If it's me and you, no wahala, but I have little children who can be easily influenced or possessed or whatever. So anyway, but it's not going to happen to my children in Jesus' name, amen. Anyway, back to the gist. So, she was talking, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry, I'll insert a little footage from it. Yeah, so I'll just blow some details and insert the footage, but yeah. She was just talking, talking, talking. The talking was so dramatic. And this thing went on for a very long time. You guys, I went down to the kitchen. I tiptoed to the kitchen, past the kitchen several times. She didn't see me. Because I was, I was, when my mother first came out, I was going to know now that maybe she's on the call. Maybe she puts her phone on speaker close to her. Maybe she's on the call. That's why she's doing that. My mother said, this thing has been going on for so long. Like, and where's the phone? So I checked through the camera, I said, okay, maybe the phone is in her pocket and she's talking to the person from her pocket. She was not wearing clothes in her pocket, she was wearing a skirt. I still did not want to agree. I told my mother, no, it's not possible after talking to herself. She was talking to somebody. Of course, she was talking to somebody, just we couldn't see the, the somebody. <laughs> anyway, so I tiptoed, I went to the kitchen, I went there to listen and see if I can hear speaker phone, like someone's voice on speaker. I didn't hear anybody's voice. I came back to my room. I now called her upstairs and told her that she should please give me her phone that I want to use the touch. I find I said that oh the phone has touch. She said yes, it has touch. I said okay, please give me your phone. I want to use the touch for something. So she came and gave me the phone. Okay. I quickly went, yes, I'm not proud to say this, but I just have to do my investigation. Okay. I quickly went to the last call. I checked. The last call was like over an hour ago. That's when she made the last call. I was like, okay. Don't step me. I said anyway, let me just see. Maybe she quickly deleted her call log when she was bringing the phone up to me. I could have checked the camera on the stairs to see if she did anything on her phone. But I just wanted to believe that no, maybe she was just, maybe she deleted the call log before she gave me the phone. So I took the phone from her and she went back to the kitchen. Then guess what? Gang, 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 gang. Guess what? She continued talking in the kitchen, okay? And when I say talking, you guys, I see there's a difference between thinking out loud, there's a difference between singing, there's a difference between just talking, you know, for the sake of talking. This person was having a conversation. Somebody was responding to her, whether spiritually or whatever. I don't know, but whoever she was talking to was responding because she would talk, she would keep quiet, person would talk, she would not say, no, 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 this, that, this, that, she would, as in the talker. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I thought my mother no, she has to leave my house this time. Like, she can't even sleep in my house. Like, oh, my mother said, Sing. Is it because you saw it? I beg that him found send her away. I should send her away. That's not his business. Because he has even told me right from time he didn't like her. And why he didn't like her was because she wasn't doing the work with well. my mother. Does hate lazy people. 
he, he hates he's a very hard working person so if you're lazy around him it seems to itch it scatters his brain so my mom just did not like her from when she came and coupled with the things i told him about her maybe she just he just said you know he was your cancelled it was still even though he didn't like her he couldn't send her away he's always he always did such things to me to make the final decision and me now i just did not like that change i just don't want that change i just want somebody that will stay to my children are old enough to not need help and the person will go all this changing traffic in and out of my house i don't like it okay so my dear brothers and sisters and now i just did not know what to do again like I, I i even stopped watching because i was just tired of watching this thing went on for a very long time i was tired of watching well in conclusion i didn't send her home that day funny enough i didn't even send her home that week i waited till like weeks after when i said i mean i think it was even the next month after that i'm just like you know what i'm not comfortable with this girl in this house i'm not comfortable like if i'm not comfortable there's no point trying to make it work trying to just um there's no i'm not comfortable with her so i had to call her one day and just tell her you know what i waited i waited till night my mama was not even around that time so i waited till night when it was night and after that um i've been watching people i've been doing everything you need to do today she said yes i said okay um just get ready pack your things tomorrow morning you're leaving simply because i really cannot i'm not comfortable with you i showed her the footage you know the funny thing when i showed her the footage she didn't look shocked or scared or you know act surprised when she just had this look of oh no you've you've, you've discovered me or you found me out that was the look she had on her face she had this, she didn't even try to deny it she just had this look of ah oh, like oh so these people have seen me and mind you she knows i have cameras in this house so it's not like uh, she didn't know she was there when they were installing the camera so she knew she could see the cameras she has walked into our room several times while we are reviewing footage from the camera so she knows that the cameras in this house so if she couldn't help herself to not display you can imagine how bad the situation was so she didn't argue, she didn't, she just, I just asked her, so who were you talking to? She said, I wasn't talking to anybody, but it wasn't even like she was trying to defend herself. She was just like, let me just lie for sake of lying, but the truth is that you put found me. I told her, this thing you did is not normal, I hope you know. She said, yes, she knows. I said, yeah, it's not normal. So when you go back home, you either go and go to church, go for deliverance or whatever you will do. I, like I said, I don't even believe in that deliverance thing, but just accept Christ. And she saw that you should you know she, in church she used to pray in, you see her dancing singing in church you know when we pray she prays well so i was just like i was just confused but the truth is that i have learned from my parents experiences like to be honest i'm not in the ministry of delivering anybody or trying to help the helpless at this point simply because i have small kids okay if i were older maybe if my kids were in boarding school and i had somebody in fact my kids are in boarding school i don't need any help in fact once once my kids graduate nursery school i don't need any help but let's just say for some reason i have a help or an assistant or something when my kids are not in the house fine if person starts displaying i might try to help the person but right now when i have two beautiful children in this house with that no i don't have time for that okay if you misbehave you go home you know so even though i'm not even as quick as i should like i should have sent out immediately I, I saw that footage but anyway i don't i think i felt bad for her I felt bad for her. I was just like, I just felt bad for her, but I just had to let her go. So, guys, that was it. Though. That was how the next morning, first thing, I just took her to the park, and that was it. That was the last communication between us. I even told her to call me. I even gave her extra money because I really felt bad for her, to be honest. I felt bad for her because the way she responded, I feel like it's something that has been following her for years. It might have even cost her another job or i don't know i don't know what it was but i really felt bad for her so i just gave her extra money and told her if you need anything call me when you get home call me if you want to talk call me but they they where you they let me be here so you can call me from there don't sleep in my house you know yeah so that is it though that is it for this house help horrors okay that is it for this story and that is it for this series or whatever this is i am done with this i am not going to come here and tell you guys any other house help horror story again i am so happy with the person that i have now if for anybody who doesn't know the person i have now um i'm actually i've had her on my channel before she's actually an orphan so right now that's why i have three children she's not even like a help anymore to me she's more like my 
first child Eva loves her so much in fact she's like Eva's second mom at this point her and Cora are more like sisters they play like sisters they fight like sisters sometimes I'm like why, why do I have three children I wanted only two why do I have three children because sometimes a marriage woman meets me auntie auntie uh, Cora refused to do this one, this one this one come and see what Cora did uh, come and I'll be like why are you, why are you complaining to me I know an adult are you her mates that you come and be, I'll be telling me everything then Cora will come and meet me mommy mommy I'm married to this I'm married to that I'm like I'm married to refuse to give me this. I'm married to refuse to give me that. I'm like, God, why do I have three children? You know, so yeah, um, I love our relationship. She's an orphan, so it's we we still we kind of have that unspoken agreement that she's kind of adopted. We kind of adopted her for now. It's not like if she misbehaves, I'll keep no, if you misbehave, you go. But yeah, it's not like she's perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect, even my mother is not perfect, my children are not perfect, so nobody's perfect, but she's perfect enough. You know her level of perfection is enough for us and we're okay with it so yeah uh, right now i'm happy and my children are happy and that's the update that is where we are at this point all right so guys that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it's not too long for you guys but if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and also share this video and leave a comment in the comment section if you've experienced anything close to this what do you think about the stories i told um do you have any horror stories of your own please leave a comment in the comment section and yeah i'll see you all in my next video bye Mwah.